Eminem just put out his recent album, The Death of Slim Shady, and it's just a bucket of cringe. It's so bad. He has evolved as an artist in the worst way possible. And the first thing that people took note of is how he name dropped Candace Owens on not one but two tracks on this album. Firstly, from his song Lucifer, he, he wrote, Candace O, I ain't mad at her. I ain't gonna throw the fact B-I-T-C-H forgot she was black back at her. Laugh at her like them crackers she's back in after her back is turned in a cute MAGA hat with her brand new White Lives Matter shirt. It, it goes further than that. He said, or say this MAGA dirtbag in a skirt just opened the biggest can of worms on the whole planet Earth. Call her Grand Wizard. Yeah, Clandis. Ha ha, or Grand Dragon, or like the, na the national anthem. I won't stand for the tramp. That was all of his uh, beautiful lyricism on yeah. that song, Lucifer. And um, here's my problem <laughs> with it on its face is like he's been around since, you know, the late 90s. He's as mainstream as it gets. He's very, very successful. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a weird side quest to go and dunk on a political influencer. Like the idea of rap artists beefing with political influencers is dorky. Well, it's it's dorky, but it's incredibly ironic how he has become everything that he stood against, I guess, as an artist when he was cool. I mean, I think everyone can agree that he is not cool anymore. And he even acknowledged that he acknowledged this in his recent music video where he has, a, a, you know, his double yeah. who is playing the younger version of him. He's playing Slim Shady in the video yeah. and he's acknowledging how irrelevant he's become, but he cannot quit and he just keeps making himself look more and more like an out of touch sellout who is completely pro establishment. There's no way for him not to do that. Here's the thing. If he was to, to be anti establishment in any facet that he actually talks about, he'd have to then a lot, he'd have to go join kid rock on stage. And I don't think he wants to do Is that. there even a way hmm. to be anti establishment no. in a way that isn't cringe now? Internet internet only and you have to be young and, and you you know what? i i'm starting to think you have to be anonymous as well but yeah. that's another conversation the, okay so he, like the song lucifer it, it's really really weird because stylistically it's very reminiscent of early eminem and it's gets caught in this weird middle ground where he both at the start of the song references Twitter and TikTok bands, which is unbelievably current year, but he then is also constantly name dropping name pronouns. Drops his mom and talks about. Um, he mentions Columbine in the song. It's like, what year is it? So uh, it's like the. I feel like maybe it's been a quarter of a century. It just feels like it's a very confused message. The I don't find there's anything, no message. The the lyrical work is fine. I think he's still gifted as a, an actual lyricist. I just think that identity crisis is going to be that way when you're he, okay there's one point in the song where he does reference like people making fun of him because he because he's like out of touch and he's rich and i would i would rather he focus on that like he has a line about basically like having to like go to the like the opposite end of the house is like we're gonna the go through is, more of his yeah. lyrics after this but i wanted to show part of candace's response to this go to the about the the minute 15 mark ish hold please after she's read them out loud a la ben shapiro reading the lyrics to wap imagine for a second yeah imagine for a second that, that Eminem... candace owens is in the kkk a, a struggling internally gay man and so there's a lot going happening with eminem and we we should pray for him um on the second point the way that we know that is because he's actually recycling things that black women have said about me on the internet like he's pretending this is original calling me clandis it's not this is like he's just recycling the black women that don't like me on the internet have a lot of names for me one of them being candy o so he's, he's like watched what they're saying. And I guess someone who was listening to him in the booth was like, yeah, this is a good one. Yeah, drop the beat. They're really, 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 really going to like that. Uh, by the way, there's a second song he also dropped. This one's called Bad One. And the lyrics are this about me. 
Yeah, this whole subgenre with all these corny white rappers, I'm not a fan of it. It ain't my fault, but like sock puppets, I had a hand in it. This thousand bucks in my hand is just like what Candace did when she turned her back on her own race. Because I have abandoned it. Oh, <laughs> oh my, so cool. That's a tough one. That's so tough. The black community is going to be going crazy. Not I don't think they care. I don't think that's going to happen at all. They as in I don't think black that, people? I don't think anyone cares. I don't think, like, 90% of the people listening to this will have no clue who she is. He's writing something that maybe would have been relevant to listeners in 2017 or maybe during 2020 at the height of BLM. Mm -hmm. But it's like it took him, it's almost as if he wrote this five years ago and it took him this long to actually get the album out. I don't even know. She, she also said he still thinks he's a 13 year old boy rapping in his room when in reality he's 51 years old. You do forget how old he is because he looks like he hasn't aged a day yeah, since the 2000s. Yeah. We have a 20 from Brian Howe. I'm from Michigan. Eminem seems to have forgot what party ruined Detroit, and his lyric writing seems to have fallen off. Uh, he doesn't think of it that deeply, would be my guess. He doesn't think about anything that deeply. Um, he has a song, as I've brought up many times, called We as Americans, mm -hmm. that talks about criminals not being able to own guns. And I used to make the joke as like, I love the idea that he like, is a constitutional lawyer on the weekends and raps during the week. It's actually quite good. And if I remember correctly, that one wasn't released on the American version of that album. I think there's a, a, a quote about Bush that was a no-no back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, Candace also tweeted about another one of his tracks on the album saying, uh, in case you needed any more proof that Eminem has a handler, he dropped a track criticizing people who didn't wear masks. The rap game is filled with closeted homosexuals who are blackmailed into towing the establishment line. That's who she thinks Eminem is being blackmailed to make rap this cringe. I think that he's just genuinely cringe. Well, then why would it he says, make the, he references Diddy. Eminem criticizes non-mask wearers on a new rap track in collaboration with Kid Cudi. The single is The Adventures of Moon Man and Slim Shady. And on the song, Eminem raps, Bunch of half wits up in the office, half of us walking around like a zombie apocalypse. Other half are just pissed off and don't want to wear a mask, and they're just scoffing, and that's how you end up catching the shit off them. I just use the same basket as you shopping. Now I'm in an effing casket from you coughing. Yeah. So he is talking about catching COVID from someone in a grocery store and dying from it. Political rap from either party tends to be very lame. This is just so boomerish. In, in it's, current year. He wouldn't, wouldn't past Eminem be humiliated by this? Yeah. I have to think that. And there were some people posting screenshots from, from Genius that were fake, but I swear this one was real. It came from his song, Fuel, I'm like an R-A-P-E-R, -E yeah, got so many S-A's, get it? Yep. S-A. Wait, he didn't just spell the word rapper and leave out a P, did he? I wonder if That's he wrote great. that late. Um, um, and then another one, Gen Z, here they come now, about to unload rounds, pronouns, shit. That was another line. He has another line that says, you gonna cancel me, yeah? Gen Z me, bruh? Another one, uh, here's, here's from his song, Habits. Got the women pissed, and it seems like men are just off growing a huge clitoris. Yeah, I probably annoyed a few feminists. I reminisce on them blowing a fuse over my points of views. Still, I'm devoid of shits to give. My thinking is primitive, uh, but when it comes to giving it to anybody, boy is Bruce generous, and I'm about as much of a boy as Bruce Jenner is, cause I'm not a boy, I'm a man, bitch. My speech is free as his choice to choose gender is. This shit like, is like opioid abuse, isn't it? There's just way too much name dropping mm. of 
pronouns and Gen Z snowflake it's culture. Your boomer, it's your boomer uncle on Facebook. It's literally copy and pasted from black Twitter and boomer Facebook memes put into a blender mm. and just like shat out for the world to listen to. Personality wise, I don't know what else he's supposed to do given he was an early establishment player who was packaged and sold as anti-establishment because back then we lived in a, a more Christian majority country that actually would scoff at such lyrics. So <laughs> it spoke to the teenagers and young adults of the time. Nowadays, that doesn't really exist in the same way. Uh, another one that I'm pretty sure is fake is from the song Habits farted so hard that i sharted my ass is r worded i got more downs than pronouns call me mr yeah. r worded um that one is i'm pretty sure fake yeah. but i just can't buy that eminem is doing this in a self-aware ironic way he yeah. he must legitimately think that this is offending people but no one is offended. They're just getting secondhand embarrassment at this point. Uh, I, th I think there's probably a large contingent of normies in his audience that are perfectly fine with it. Because relatively recently, didn't we post a video that was like, Gen Z tries to cancel Eminem? Yes. But it was only because he, that he wrote a lyric yeah. about Megan the Stallion yeah. and her getting shot in the foot and they were offended on her behalf. But none of the lyrics about pronouns or politics or gender or free speech or slurs none of those got you know none of those caught him any ire any backlash as far as i could tell from gen z so maybe he's just creating the the idea yeah. that they're easily offended snowflakes when really they're like sorry who's eminem like i know baby gronk i don't know eminem because he's he's just so irrelevant to this generation. But he's not. Yeah, so he's not speaking to them. He's speaking to you know Gen Z or I'm sorry to Gen X and millennials. Are they seriously listening yes, to this are. stuff? Yes, they are. Like all like, his songs still chart. All his stuff still charts really really high. Is he the goat? There's a big debate about this. I don't know if I, I don't know who I consider the goat, but I, I don't really think it's him. Okay. But you wouldn't name one. Who off I the top think of your is, head? No, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep my list to myself. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you don't want to get the backlash for what you yeah. say. I don't. Well, I I don't think that deeply about it anymore. I don't listen to as much rap as I used to. Yeah, there's a little bit too much stock placed in it. I feel like rap is not as it's not as dominant in the music genre as, as it was in the 2010s. Yeah, by now, uh, early I think 2000s after country yeah. is country and pop are now charting more than rap as far as i can tell thanks for watching listen to full episodes of pop culture crisis on spotify keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show bye guys